Ah, the Christmas season. The time of year where we start to see the Christmas animations once more. Stories of warmth, laughter, spending time with loved ones, acceptance, kindness, and truly embracing the Christmas spirit. So, what are we going to be looking at today? Ah yes, Fella Day. Another film that I hadn't seen prior to making this review, but I kept seeing it getting recommended in the comments section, and so I thought I'd check it out. And yeah, it's uh... Ah. Yeah. Interesting. Fella Day is a 1994 animated film that was produced by the German company, Trick Company. Yes, that's right, an animated film which contains a lot of animal violence and animal cruelty and it's not being produced by a British company for once. The film was directed by Michael Schark, apologies if I pronounce that wrong, and is actually based on a novel from 1989 which goes by the same name. A novel of cats and murder. Well, what more could you ask for? The film's plot starts with us being introduced to a pet cat named Francis who has just moved into the area with his owner. Francis notices a mauled cat in the back garden and learns from a cat named Bluebeard. Bluebeard? Really? That's his name? Bart, did you even watch Fella Day? This is Krabappel. I am insulted. Is this a book report or a witch hunt? Then perhaps you'd like to tell us the name of one of the cats. Bluebeard? Sit down, Bart. I'll see you after class. Aww. That this murder is just one of the many murders that has happened in recent times. Francis, along with the help of his new psychic, Bluebird, sets out to solve the mystery of who is responsible for all these killings. And what starts out as a relatively simple plot, soon becomes incredibly weird and complex, as we get introduced to this cult where the local cats worship and sacrifice themselves to an entity called Claudanus. We see videos of horrific animal testing, a tomb full of dead cats, psychotic dream sequences, and of course, some full-on cat sex. Yeah, like I said, this film is... interesting. So let's take a closer look at, uh, the plot. So after finding the mauled cat in the garden, Francis determines from the wound on the cat's neck that it must have been caused by another animal due to its unclean cut. After hearing that this is the fourth cat to be murdered in one month, Francis believes there must be a connection with the murders, and is determined to find out who, or what, is responsible. We then get an abrupt cut to the evening, where the film begins to show its true creepy nature, with Francis having a terrifying nightmare. The next morning, Francis is woken up by Bluebeard, who informs him that there's been another killing. Whilst on the way to investigate, they get stopped by another local cat called Kong. I see you've been cruising the gay scene for a change. That cute little thing behind you sure is a juicy number. Well, this is getting weird. Kong is a strange one in this film. Not only for his odd laugh, <laughs> but also because of his general design. Considering the rest of the film has this realistic art style, Kong's exaggerated size and cartoony appearance just makes him look really out of place in the film setting. Like, look at this thing. This isn't a cat. This looks like the beast from Beauty and the Beast. How has someone not spotted this thing roaming the neighborhood and called to have it shot already? Eventually, Francis and Bluebeard make it to the second killing. But take a whiff. Purple had gotten very excited when he was killed. Wait, what? Purple had gotten very excited when he was killed. Take a whiff, take a whiff. Take a whiff. Um, no, I'm good, thanks, Francis. The obvious thing that ties the two stiffs I've seen together is sex. Wait, how's that an obvious connection? You've come across two dead bodies that were slashed at the throat, and because they are both male and one happens to be smelling of rotten semen, you immediately drive to the logical conclusion that the connection must be because of sex? This is like Adam West's level of detective work right here. Your heart's a fire. 
Hmm. That rhymes with tarts on a wire, which in turn sounds like carts for hire. Kelly, your mother's being held at the golf course. Later that night, Francis is once again having trouble sleeping. But not due to some freaky nightmares. Don't worry, they'll come back later. This time, it's due to some cat cries he hears from the upstairs floor. Francis heads up to investigate, to find a group of cats committing suicide as they throw themselves into an electric current. And the chosen shall know his blessing and mercy. Save us, Lord Anderson. Shocking stuff. Boo! The cult spots Francis spying on them, and so immediately give chase. Francis manages to narrowly escape, where he meets another cat called Felicity. Felicity is a character that really creeps me out. Because she's blind, Felicity has this constant blank look on her face, which combined with her piercing eyes really makes it look like she's staring right into your soul. Plus the fact they give her such a calm and emotionless voice really doesn't help the situation. Felicity, we're talking about murder. Murder? Oh, I'm sure you're wrong. I think it's more likely that it's sex that's just gone too far. Felicity informs Francis about the cult he just saw, telling them that they are praying to a cat named Claudanus, who was previously tortured by humans. The next morning, Bluebeard takes Francis to meet another cat named Pascal. Pascal is an old, but also incredibly intelligent cat, who has been keeping a database on all the local cats, to which Francis discovers all the murdered cats belong to the same breed. All except the latest killing. Felicity! Guess you could say Felicity never saw it coming. Also, is it just me, or is the movie really trying to up its game with the disturbing imagery as it goes on? First, we get a brief shot of a dead cat. Then, we get an up-close shot of a dead cat with a slashed neck, and now, we get a close-up of a cat with its head completely decapitated. Makes me wonder, how's this movie going to one-up its next disturbing moment? Oh, I just had to ask, as Francis is once again beginning to experience a horrific nightmare. All dreams are weird. But mom, my dreams are weird. Marcy, you have no idea. In all seriousness though, as creepy and horrifying the dream sequence is, I've got to say the animation is fantastic in the sequence. The highly detailed sketches, coupled with the fade transition movements from frame to frame, really help emphasize the horror and delusion Francis is going through, not to mention the musical scoring is on point too. After awakening from his second horrific nightmare, Francis decides to hunt a few rats to ease the pressure, where he stumbles across an old videotape which reveals that the upper floor of the house was once used as an animal testing lab. And the footage we see of the animal testing is pretty damn horrific. It even makes the animal testing scenes in Plague Dogs look tame by comparisons. Plague Dogs! The point of the experiments was to develop a tissue adhesive that would instantly close all wounds. Unfortunately, all the experiments proved unsuccessful. All that is, except for one. And that sole survivor was the cat named Claudanus. Francis is then interrupted by Kong, who admits to being the one responsible for all the murders, and is now looking to add Francis to the list. Whilst escaping Kong, Francis comes across another freshly murdered cat, only this time it was not only female, but also pregnant. So yeah, we've gone from cat with a blood wound, close up of a cat with its throat cut, close up of a cat that was decapitated, and now a close up of a dead pregnant cat with her dead unborn kitten spewing from her stomach. You just keep up in the game movie, another score to you. This latest victim also happened to be Kong's mate, who was also carrying his offspring, to which Kong now vouches to get revenge on the killer. So wait, hold on. If Kong wasn't the killer after all, then why did he admit to being the killer literally a couple of minutes ago? You 
But Kong, why you? Ah, why? <laughs> well, let's just say that like you, they didn't show me respect. Was the film trying to give us a plot twist? Kong had no reason in the film to tell that lie to Francis, so clearly the only reason he told it was to dupe the audience watching. That's not how you do a plot twist film. The next day, Francis hears his name being called by a strange female voice. Oh, please no. weird. So, hang on. Weirdness aside, wasn't Francis well aware that most of these murders happened when the cats were aroused and believed that sex was the biggest link to them all? So why is it when he hears a random female voice calling his name and sees a random female cat in his garden, does he not even consider that this might be a slightly suspicious or potentially dangerous situation? Where have you come from? Who are you? Ah yes, now that we've vigorously ploughed one another, we should start to exchange some basic information. You know, like in a traffic collision. Oh, and if you're thinking that the fact Francis has now mated with this cat, it will put him on the next murder list and will play an integral role to the plot, well, it doesn't. The fact that Francis mated with this cat serves no purpose to the story and is never mentioned again after. So why is it in there? I don't know. In saying that though, between the awkward sex, because yes, they do it twice, Francis does learn that this female cat is of an older breed. And after doing some research on these Egyptian cats, Francis then somehow solves the mystery that the reason for the killings is because the killer is trying to wipe out the inferior genetics in the cat species, or better known as the Felidae species, to bring them back to their purebred Egyptian originals. And the reason I say somehow is because there is no real explanation given as to why Francis would suddenly jump to this conclusion. He has very fragmented information at this point, yet suddenly has a random brainwave, brings out a book of genetics which conveniently shows him all the information he needs, and suddenly figures everything out. What? The film even tries to justify how he got to this point by reminding us that he got some of this information from his dreams. But how could he have dreamt up that information if he had no knowledge to it prior? It makes no sense. The dreams are literally being used as a lazy plot device in order to give our character information that he couldn't have gotten otherwise. That is bad writing film, that is bad writing. Francis and Bluebeard then head over to Pascal's house, in which Pascal reveals that he was Claudanus all along. Yes, I'm Claudanus, you're right. But here's where the plot gets even… weirder. Not only did Pascal murder all those cats to purify the cat genus, but he also did it in order to build the ultimate cat army that could overthrow the human race. Because Pascal hates humans. What? First up, why does Pascal hate all humans? I get that he was tortured and all, but since then he was adopted by one of the lab assistants and now lives a life of pampered luxury. Also, what does he think an army of cats will do against humans who have guns, tanks, bombers, etc? This plan makes no sense. I think that evil cat's plan from the episode of the Powerpuff Girls made more sense than this. Anyway, Pascal asks Francis to join him, but Francis refuses, leading to a pretty anticlimactic final fight. Considering that Pascal is meant to be this super cat that can instantly heal himself, he gets defeated pretty easily. And although I must say his death is rather gruesome, it also feels unearned. I mean this cat is like the kitty version of Wolverine. Why does a simple scratch to the belly cause him to rip open like he was made of tissue paper? No cat has skin that weak and brittle. If that was the case, you would see dismembered cats all over your neighbourhood every time they got into a scrap with one another. 
I think a much cooler ending to this would have been if all the other cats had joined forces to take Claudanus down together. That would have been far more epic. Even perhaps giving Kong a bit more of an arc as he gets to take revenge on Claudanus for killing his mate earlier in the film. And so yeah, that was Felidae. So what are my thoughts? Well, the plot is a little flaky, not really making sense too much of the time. Plus there are some moments where you get some awkward jump cuts in the film. The characters are also a little underdeveloped, like Claudanus' motives seem a bit strange. We never really get an explanation as to why Francis is such an intelligent detective, other than he's just smart? Maybe some backstory of him would have been nice? And I felt the interesting looking characters, such as Kong, didn't get used to their full potential. And because the film was originally in Dutch, sometimes the dubbing can be a little tacky in places. And I wonder why the murderer is suddenly leaving victims outside the temple instead of sending them yes, to Yes, that's a very good point, Francis. And try to identify any possible survivors who are subjected to Professor oh, Praterius' attention. Gotta watch your tail a little more carefully, or you'll get hurt. But, in having said all that, I would actually recommend this film as a watch. Yes, the plot is a little crazy and far-fetched, but the pacing is good and it does keep you guessing with all the twists and turns it takes. Yes, the characters could have been more fleshed out, but they're still charming enough and you do enjoy seeing them on screen. There's no real character that I absolutely hated in this film, except for Felicity with her weird creepy eyes of course. The animation is actually pretty good as well, especially when it gets to experiment more in the crazy dream sequences. The music is also at a pretty high standard, it's just your typical orchestra, but it does well to set the tone. And the film itself, if you haven't guessed, has also been given a mature rating. And it's definitely not afraid to take advantage of that age rating. Though it is funny how they can get away with Bluebeard saying words such as piss and shit. You taking over that shit heap in there? Interesting place. I go in there for a piss occasionally. But they clearly couldn't quite get away with the F-bomb. It must have been a friggin' can opener. One thing I will warn you guys on, however, is not to expect much from this film in terms of emotion. It won't give you the same level of feels of other animated films such as Watership Down or When the Wind Blows, and doesn't really try to push any morals or messages like Plague Dog did with the animal cruelty. But I think it will keep you entertained, which of course is the most important factor when it comes to any film. And I would definitely recommend it as a point of interest for people who look for a more mature animated kind of film. I say, go give Fella Day a watch, as at the time of making this review, it is currently available to watch on YouTube for free. And if you're going to be watching it on YouTube, be sure to pause the video at this time. You can thank me later. And speaking of thanks, Thank you very much guys for watching the video, please leave a like if you enjoyed what you saw and comment below your thoughts on Fella Day and any future reviews you would like me to tackle in the future. Be sure to subscribe to see more crazy animated reviews coming up and please check out my previous reviews appearing on the left here. Next time we'll be tackling the new 2018 Watership Down remake so be sure to stay around for that one but until then guys, take care.